بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نائن سیون ڈبل زیرو جون ٹوینٹی ٹوینٹی تھری سیریز پیپر ون ٹو اینڈ دس از دا فرسٹ ویڈیو وچ از فرام کوشچن ون ٹو کوشچن ٹوینٹی ایز یو کین آل سی دیٹ ناؤ دی ایم سی یو پیپر از فار ون آر اینڈ ففٹین منٹس اینڈ دس از گوئنٹ بی فار فورٹی مارکس سیم فورٹی ایم سی کیوز بٹ دا ٹائم از انکریز فرام ون آر اٹ از گون اپ ٹو ون آر ففٹین منٹس سو دا ڈیفیکلٹی لیول از آلسو گون اپ Now let's start with question number one. A graticule and a micrometer scale can be used to measure the size of biological structures that are viewed with a microscope. Which row shows the correct locations for the placement of a graticule and a micrometer scale on the microscope shown? So we know that the graticule is placed on one and we know that the micrometer scale is placed on three. So the micrometer scale is placed on three. So that is why the answer is B. Now coming to question number two, six organelles found in eukaryotic cells are shown. So this is the nucleus, the mitochondrion, centrioles, rough endoplasmic reticulum, chloroplast, and the Golgi apparatus. Which organelles are involved in the synthesis and secretion of a glycoprotein? So the Golgi has to be there. Then the, why is the nucleus got to be there? A protein has to be DNA to mRNA, so transcription has to take place in the nucleus. Then, of course, we don't need the centrioles, so three should be there. There is only one easy way to really figure this out. Three is in this, so this is wrong. Three is in this, so this is wrong. Three in this, so this is wrong. So we left only with one choice. Very simple. Answer is B. So centrioles were actually not in it and also 5 is not in it because chloroplasts are not required for uh, the secretion of a glycoprotein. So 5 and 3 should not be in it. And that was one easy way of doing it. But basically what happens in a glycoprotein, the protein, you see why nucleus, the transcription takes place in the nucleus DNA to mRNA. Then uh, the mRNA comes and gets attached to the ribosome when the protein is made and then the secretory vesicle goes to the Golgi and then the Golgi is going to modify it and the glycogen part is going to be added to it. Why do we need two? Two is the mitochondria. You need ATP, you need activated nucleotides, you need energy. Question number three, which cell structures can have mRNA inside them? This inside them was a catch. Four cannot have mRNA inside them because this is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, right? And you have the ribosomes on it. So the mRNA comes and gets attached to the ribosome. So the mRNA is not inside the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So we cannot have four. So that is why the answer to three is B. One, two, and three only. Because mRNA can be inside the chloroplast because it has its DNA and its own ribosome. Mitochondria also has DNA and ribosomes. Nucleus, why would it have mRNA? With DNA to mRNA. Transcription takes place in the nucleus. But in the chloroplast and mitochondria, transcription and translation takes place. Question 4. A scientist carried out an experiment to separate the organelles in an animal cell by mass. The scientist mixed the cells with a buffer solution, which had the same water potential as the cells. The cells were broken open with a blender to release the organelles. The extracted mixture was filtered and then spun in a centrifuge at a high speed to separate the heaviest type of organelle. These sank to the bottom forming solid pellet one. So the heaviest organelle, which is the nucleus, would be in the first step. The liquid above the pellet one was poured into a clean centrifuge tube and spun in the centrifuge at a higher speed to separate the next heaviest type of organelle. Now if it was a plant cell, it would have been the chloroplast, but no, it was an animal cell. So the next heaviest would be the mitochondria. These organelles sank to the bottom, forming the solid pellet 2. The procedure was repeated twice more to obtain 3 and 4. 
So three would be the next things which would be the smaller than the mitochondria, and then the fourth would be even smaller than the third one. And these were all containing a single type of organelle. What is the main function of the type of organelle extracted in pellet two? Because it was mitochondria, so it is the production of ATP. Now, okay, digestion of old organelles. What would this be? This would be lysosomes. And production of mRNA would be the nucleus. And synthesis of proteins would be the ribosomes. So another question they can ask you: pellet three and pellet four. So the nucleus is the largest, then the mitochondria. and then the lysosomes and then the ribosomes so lysosomes are larger than the ribosomes question number 5 which structures are found in palisade mesophyll cells and photosynthetic prokaryotes so cell membrane is common in both cellular cell wall is only present in the palisade does not be present in the photosynthetic prokaryote ribosomes will be present Ribosomes will be present in the prokaryote, so it's one will be present and three will be present. Why won't chloroplasts be present in prokaryotes? Because prokaryotes do not have any membrane-bound organelles. Some photosynthetic just have thylakoids, but they are not the entire chloroplast. The prokaryotes do not have membrane-bound organelles, so that is why the question five, the answer was C. Question number six: Which polymers are present in all viruses? So viruses can be either DNA or RNA. So polynucleotides would be present in all viruses and all prokaryotes. So this is the important way is how you read the question: present in all viruses and all eukaryotes. So why is it one and two only? Why is the answer B? Because you see, polynucleotide means DNA or RNA. Now those can be in all viruses. There can be either DNA or RNA. And in prokaryotes, you also have DNA and you have ribosomes, so you have RNA as well. Polypeptides are proteins, and all viruses can have a protein coat. They all have, and they also have sometimes a fat layer on top of it. Prokaryotes have a cell membrane, cell wall, and in the cytoplasm, they have. DNA and ribosomes, so they make their own proteins. So proteins will be present, but polysaccharides would not be present in viruses. But there is a peptidoglycan layer in prokaryotes, but that is in only in prokaryotes. There is a uh, there is this sort of you can say a polysaccharide component to the uh, cell wall. So the answer is B. Now the next question was a very good question on the ethanol emulsion test. Which set of steps is the best method for conducting the ethanol emulsion test? Now you know that that you take the sample and you add ethanol. So the first thing was add ethanol. So the add ethanol is in here, and add ethanol is here. So the other question, the other ones are all wrong. So you just come out with ethanol. So when you add the ethanol to the sample, the lipid or the fat dissolves in the ethanol, and then you add water, and you shake it, and you see when you add the ethanol, of course the fat dissolves in the ethanol because ethanol is an organic solvent. But when you add the water, it becomes uh, cloudy. So that is why the question to this is seven is D. Ethanol shake, pour the ethanol into a test tube containing two centimeter water. Shake again, lipids are present, the mixture becomes cloudy. Now, why was B wrong? Add two centimeter ethanol to the sample, shake, pour the ethanol into a test tube containing water, and boil. This was wrong. Lipids are present in the moisture, becomes clear. No, it becomes cloudy. Doesn't become clear. It becomes clear when you add the ethanol. The lipid dissolves in the ethanol. That is why it gets a clear. It gives you a clear look. Like if you add sugar to water, it is clear. You don't know if there is sugar unless you taste it. You can't tell from the outside. Oh my God, this contains sugar in the water. So this is how you go about this question. Please understand. If you don't understand the question, please listen to my recording twice so that you understand what I'm saying. Question number eight: A student was provided with a solution of carbohydrate. They remove remove two samples from the solution form test on each sample so this we got one sample so 
they divided into two samples A and B and then they did some tests on it. So carbohydrate solution sample one, Benedict's test and Benedict's remain blue. So that means no reducing sugar present. Then the sample two, they boiled with dilute acid and then they neutralized with sodium hydroxide and then they did the Benedict's test and you got a Benedict solution turned yellow. So there is some reducing sugar present after the HCL wala story. And that means that this was sucrose or it was hydrolyzed and one glucose and fructose formed and then the glucose and fructose reacts with the Benedict's and it gave you a color, a yellow color. Which statement explains the results? Now this is very interesting because unless you really know this very well, you can't really come up with the answer. So condensation reaction occurs in sample two to release reducing sugar. Condensation how? When you break the bond between glucose and fructose, it's a hydrolysis reaction. It's not a condensation reaction. It's when the bond forms, then water molecule exits and that's condensation. Now the answer of course is B, which is glycosidic bonds in a polysaccharide have been broken to release the reducing sugar. So basically what we have done is we've got glucose and we've got fructose. And that bonds together to form sucrose. So this whole molecule is a sucrose molecule. When you add the HCl, this bond breaks and the glucose and fructose separate and now these are reducing sugars. So glycosidic bonds in a glycopalis polysaccharide have been broken to release the reducing sugar. Now see why is that wrong? Sample one shows that sucrose is present in the carbohydrate solution. No, if you do sucrose with Benedict's, it is not going to be positive. Sucrose does not react with Benedict's because sucrose is a disaccharide. The change in color to a yellow solution shows that glucose is present. No, that doesn't show glucose is present. Benedict solution turned yellow, but that was after you had added the HCl. So the change has shows that any reducing sugar could be present. Glucose is not only reducing sugar. There are many reducing sugars. Glucose and fructose both are reducing sugars. There are other reducing sugars as well. So we can't say glucose is the only reducing sugar. So please understand why the answer was B and not D. Question number nine, which molecules contain at least two double bonds. Now I want you to look at the structure of uh, the three molecules. Of course the answer is uh, very simple. It's uh, not a very difficult answer. The answer is B. Now the reason why the answer is B is because it's hemoglobin and collagen. Sucrose does not have a double bond. Sucrose is made of glucose and fructose. The double bonds are present in the collagen and the hemoglobin which are complex proteins. I mean, hemoglobin has a quaternary structure. So I want you to just look at the diagram and just revise the structures once again. This is a picture of uh, collagen. You can see the double bonds in it. And then you can see a picture of uh, hemoglobin and the number of double bonds in it and no double bond in sucrose. So just pause the video here, have a look at it. Maybe Google it if you have some issues in understanding it and uh, then understand it. Question two, uh, question 10, what describes cellulose? Now we know cellulose contains beta glucose. So the alpha ones are all wrong. So you first mark those, the alpha ones are wrong. Now you are left with question, uh, B and D. Now it's a branch chain, no it's not a branch chain. It's an unreactive linear chain. So that is why the answer is D. It's a linear chain of one, four beta, glu beta glucose joined together. And that is what it gives it the strength and the microfibrils and then the macrofibrils. So just go through the chapter on biological molecules and just revise that. Then coming to question number 11, which part of the structure of hemoglobin carries oxygen? Everybody knows that it's the heme groups. The Fe2 plus is the heme group, which Fe2 plus binds to the oxygen. So it carries the oxygen. Now coming to question number 12, what is the maximum number of hydrogen bonds that can form between two single water molecules? There's only one. Let's revise this for a minute. Now, as you can see in these diagrams, there's uh, one water molecule, there's only one hydrogen bond. So this water molecule and this water molecule has only got one hydrogen bond. And I love this uh, diagram of cohesion means the water molecules when they bond with each other, which is this one bonding with this one. But adhesion is along with the walls of the vessel, so along the xylem vessel. So I, I love this diagram. I think it's very cute showing you cohesion and adhesion very well. 
so uh, the fact that the hydrogen the water molecules how many hydrogen bonds do they form and if they said okay how many four water molecules how many hydrogen bonds would they form so you can see how they would have to really word a question in the way to say three hydrogen bonds because if you look at this one one two three four and between four there are three hydrogen bonds holding it together now coming to question number 13 c5p3 4 3a4 is an important enzyme well the name and all you not important is the fact that this is whatever cyp3 is an enzyme in the human digestive system where it is needed to break down a range of different toxins so basically this enzyme breaks down toxins the activity of cyp has been shown to be reduced by a substance called furonocoumarins so there's some sort of inhibitor to that enzyme furonocoumarins are found in some fruits and so dangerous concentration of toxins may develop because if you have in the human digestive system when fruits containing furo furonocoumarins are eaten so enzyme in the digestive system breaks down toxins then in the fruit if you take furonocoumarins then they are going to result in the enzyme not able to work and the toxins will accumulate and that is why concentration of toxics may develop and fruits containing furanocoumarins are eaten for the information provided what can we conclude about the molecule of the enzyme cyp3a4 the answer is of course a the lower they lower the activation energy of the toxin breakdown reactions so what does enzyme do it breaks down a range of different toxins what do enzymes do they lower the activation energy you see what you have to understand is that they were asking a question about enzymes they weren't asking you about the inhibitors they didn't ask you what were furonocoumarins and how did they act so they lower the activation energy now with b it said they bind specifically through the active site to a substrate found in some fruits no there's nothing to do with the fruits the cyp34a is in the human digestive cell where it is needed to break down a range of different toxins and what does the furonocoumarins do has shown to be to be reduced by the activity of the enzyme has been reduced by the furonocoumarins so how how could it be reduced they change permanently when acted by the furonocoumarins molecules no there doesn't tell us in the in the information in the question they resume normal activity when concentrations of furonocoum that's not even given in the question we don't know anything from that from the question so the answer was a now coming to question number 14 a fixed volume and concentration of substrate and enzyme were mixed okay let's talk about this now so there are 100 enzymes active sites and what do we have we have 1000 of these a fixed volume and concentration of substrate and enzyme were mixed all other variables were kept constant the enzyme catalyst reaction was left until it was complete which graph shows how the rate of reaction changes with time so now imagine when there are 100 and there are 1000 and what would happen when this will be 10 or what would happen when this is 100 and then what would happen when it's 10 so for 1000 it went down to 500 and then it went down to 100 and then it went down to 50 and then it went down to 10 how is the rate of reaction going to change with time the answer is c because what is going to happen the product formation in the beginning is going to be more but then the product formation is going to slow down and is going to come zero on the end because first the substrates were 1000 then they went down to 500 then 100 then 50 but when they come less than Uh, 100 then some of the active sites will uh, be unoccupied so the rate of reaction will decrease because they told you in the question a fixed volume and concentration of substrate and enzyme were mixed and then the enzyme catalyzed reaction was left until it was complete until all the product was formed all the substrate had been used up 
which graph shows how the rate of reaction changes with time. I hope this has become clear with this diagram and I hope you've understood what I'm trying to say that the rate of reaction with the giving yourself a certain specific example of a number of active sites, say 100 active sites and 1000 substrate molecules and how the reaction will proceed. Question number 15, which molecules in cell surface membranes are typically involved in cell recognition? So cell recognition, the only ones which I seem to remember is glycolipids and glycoproteins. So that is why the answer is C, glycolipids and glycoproteins. So glycolipids and glycoproteins are involved in cell recognition because they have the, the glycoproteins result in the antigens formation and that is how the cell recognition takes place. Question number 16, what can increase the fluidity of the cell surface membrane? Now it's only two because the answer is uh, cholesterol. The rest of it is all wrong. There's no single bond between carbon atoms. That is of course means there's a saturated fat that becomes more solid. So that is wrong. Longer chain fatty acids, no, that doesn't. So it's only two and which cholesterol which increases the fluidity of the cell surface membrane. Question number 17. The three main factors that affect the rate of diffusion across the membrane can be expressed by the relationship shown. Rate of diffusion is proportional to surface area and to concentration difference and thickness of the membrane. Which changes in the factor would result in the rate of diffusion doubling? So the rate of diffusion doubling would be surface area is developed, doubled. So, okay, that can increase the this thing. Then concentration difference has halved. So you see that steeper the concentration division, but they have said the concentration has halved. So if it was 110, 110 difference, so now it has become 50 and 10. Well, that's not the steeper the difference, the more the, so this is wrong. And uh, the thickness of the membrane has doubled. What changes in the factor would result in the rate of diffusion to double? No, that is wrong. If the thickness of the membrane has doubled, then diffusion is going to become difficult. Thickness of the membrane is halved. So it is one in four. So C is the answer. So what we have to understand is that in diffusion, what are we going to talk about? We're talking about the steepness of the gradient. We're talking about the surface area and we're talking across the thickness of the membrane to which it uh, crosses. Question number 18. A student measure the time taken for complete diffusion of a dye into agar blocks of different uh, sizes which are suspended in the dye. The results are shown. And uh, 555, 5, 6.2, 10, 10, 10, 16.1, 15, 15, 34.5, and 5, 10, 15. So what is the predicted time for complete diffusion of the dye in the agar block measuring 5 to 10 into 15? Now the answer is A. Why is the answer A? Because you see 5 means that it has to go 2.5 to reach the center of the block. Now in this also it is 5, so it will take the same time to reach the center of the block because if it is 5, then the half of it is 2.5 and to reach the center of the block, it is going to take 2.5 to reach the center of the block. So it will be A, 6.2. Now please remember this has come in March 20 as well, this question. And you can have a look at the exam report of March 20, 9700. And there is information on this question, how this was handled and how, what is the answer like. Question number 19, an experiment was carried out to investigate the effect of concentration of sucrose solution on cells in a plant tissue. A sample of plant tissues were counted to seven cylinders of equal length and diameter. The mass of each cylinder was recorded. Each of the seven cylinders were put into a different sucrose solution concentration, bung, test tube, sucrose solution, plant tissue cylinder. After two hours, the cylinders were removed, blood dried and reweighed. The percentage change in mass of each cylinder was recorded. The graph shows the results of this investigation. Percentage change in mass of plant tissue cylinder. Concentration of sucrose solution mold DMQ. Which row explains the results if plant tissue cells were put in a sucrose solution of 0.5 mold? So we've got to look at something here. 0.5 would be somewhere here. And this is the point here. And then we have something like 0.5 minus 7.5 
is the percentage change in mass of plant of the tissue slumber. So it has lost mass. The mass has decreased. Now when the mass has decreased, now what do they ask you? They ask asking you water potential of the cytoplasm of the cells at the start of the experiment compared with the water potential of 0.45. You see, why would, why would water move out of the tissue? The water potential of the cytoplasm of the cells has to be higher water potential, which means it has to be less negative. The answer, the question that they've given you less negative, more negative. Now this is a cell, this is minus 10. Something outside is minus 20. So it will, water will move out from minus 10 to minus 20. So it moves out from a less negative. So that is why it will move out from a less negative to a more negative. So water potential of the cytoplasm of the cells at the start of the experiment compared with the water potential of 0.45. It has lost mass because water has moved out of the tissue of the mass of the plant tissue has decreased and change in the volume of the vacuoles of the cell at the end of the experiments that were initially placed in 0.5. Yes, this change in the volume would have decreased. So it would have decreased. So that is why the answer is A. That water potential of the cytoplasm at the start compared will be less negative. So that means water will move out. And the volume would of course decrease when the water moves out. The vacuoles of the cell at the end of the experiment would of course be decreased in volume. Now the last question, question number 20. The diagram shows part of the organization of a section of a DNA molecule and the associated histones P and R. So P and R are the histones and in prophase of mitosis. Prophase, what happens? They shorten and condense. Which statement were the features labeled P, Q and R during prophase of mitosis is correct? The answer of course is D. The linked groups of histones P and R and the associated DNA Q form strands that fold and twist together to form a chromatid. Now why are the others wrong? The coiled DNA molecule forms Q and wraps around histone R to form small clusters held in place by histone P. Well that's not very correct. Second is the group of histones P and its associated DNA Q move closer together as the chromosome condenses around R. No, it doesn't condense around R. The stones P and R are made of protein around which the DNA molecule Q is wrapped so that DNA molecule can fit inside the nucleus. Well, of course, in prophase, the nuclear membrane is going to start to disintegrate. We don't need the nuclear membrane anymore. The nuclear membrane in prophase is going to start to break down. Of course, it will be reformed. So we can't say it is totally destroyed, but it will just start to break up into a molecular level. The phospholipid bilayers will break up into phosphates and fatty acids and glycerol. And then, of course, it has to be reformed. So that is why this is wrong. Now that completes this video and we will continue the rest of the paper in another video. Thank you very much.